right, you've arrived at lesson 6.3, and today we're going to talk about this thing called reverse chain rule. Or, or I should say, and this idea of U substitution. So today's lesson is the most difficult so far in the unit, and I really want you to focus on the idea of chain rule. We're going to look at something called the reverse chain rule. So let's do some warm-up examples. If I ask you for number 1 to take the derivative of 1 plus 5x all raised to the power of 4, hopefully you used to remember chain rule. You bring the exponent down, so that's 4. 1 plus 5x to the power of 3. And then you have this extra factor, yes, the derivative of the inside, which is the number 5. Okay. Once again, that's the part that a lot of people forget. Okay, so how about number two? Oh, we have a sine function now. So the derivative of a sine function is just the cosine function. So cosine of 1 plus 5x. And once again, the derivative of the inside gives us an extra factor of 5. Good. So notice in the derivative chain rule method, we have this extra factor of 5 that always comes out. So what do you think is going to happen when I now try to integrate? So now I want you to integrate this thing, 5 bracket 1 plus 5x to the power of 3. So remember how we had that extra factor of 5? Well, there's that extra factor of 5. What do you think happens when we undo it? When we undo it, that extra factor of 5 then must disappear. So therefore, we we're going to have just 1 plus 5x, and we're going to raise it to the power of, that's correct, 4. Don't forget to divide by the new exponent, and then plus c. Now once again, if you're like, I don't believe you. I don't see how you got that. Well, take the derivative of the expression that I wrote in green here and see if you get the same thing as the question. Okay, so just quickly, if I take the derivative, I'm going to have 1 quarter, and I'm going to take the derivative now of 1 plus 5x to the power of 4. That's 4, 1 plus 5x to the power of 3, and then an extra factor of 5. You got it. And notice the one quarter of the quarter just becomes one, and then yeah, we do get the exact same expression that I started with. Okay, so once again, reverse chain rule, extra factor. Sorry, not reverse chain rule. When I did the chain rule, when I used differentiation, extra factor. When I do the reverse chain rule, trying to do the antiderivative, I need to then remove the extra factor. Okay. So in this case, removing the extra factor, I should have sine of 1 plus 5x, and then plus c. Okay? Now, it just so happened that in all these examples, the factor was 5. Okay? So, where did that 5 come from? Well, remember, that 5 came from the derivative of the inside function. So... Remember, when we're doing the chain rule, when I do the derivative, it's the derivative of the inside function. And in examples number 1 and 2, that happened to be the number 5. So when I go the opposite way, reverse chain rule, I had to then remove it or delete the derivative of the inside function. And it just so happens to be that the derivative of the inside function just happened to be, of course, 5. So understanding this idea, then all those integration rules that we did in the last two lessons can now be generalized using the reverse chain rule integrals. Meaning, instead of having just x, I can now have a function. So u is just some big blah, blah, blah function of x, okay? Blah, blah, blah of x, okay? So think of it some like x cubed plus 3x plus 2, or just some crazy function of x. The key thing is this. You must see the derivative of that inside function, which we call u prime. Okay, so u prime is just the derivative of that messy thing. Derivative of blah, 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 blah. Okay, if you have that u prime there, then we can just remove it, and then you're just taking a regular integral just like before okay same thing with the exponential right if it's there u prime then we can remove it and it's just e to the u plus c same thing with a to the u if you have a u prime there remove it a to the u over ln a same as before and similarly the same ideas with trig rules as long as it's there in the integrand remove it and then you can find the antiderivative
okay as long as it's there 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 so understanding that idea then let's see if you can integrate these examples okay it's so number five our blah 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 if you think about it is this thing in the bracket the 3x minus 1 so if that's my u okay blah 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 then I need to find my u prime or the derivative of that inside function and that derivative of the inside function would be in this case yeah the number three but do you actually see a three there that I can remove uh -uh. so here's the trick we need to actually put a three in in it we have to create it so I would put it here in front of the 3x minus 1 to the power of 10 dx but I can't do that because I've actually changed the whole entire expression so to balance that balance out that 3 I need to then put a 1 3rd in front because 1 3rd times 3 just gives me 1 I can multiply anything by 1 and not change the value okay I can change how it looks like but I don't change the value this is important because now I have my reverse chain rule factor that u prime it's there so now when I take the antiderivative I can then take it out goodbye and then just have here 3x minus 1 raised to the power of 11 and divide by the new exponent 11 and then don't forget plus c so I can simplify that 1 over 33 3x minus 1 to the power of 11 plus c okay let's look at number six you're like, ooh, I don't even know which one's an ugly function. They're both looking ugly. Okay, so remember, one of them should be the u prime. So think about which one looks like the u prime. Hmm, this is a power of 2. This is a power of 3. I'm thinking if I made that ugly function blah, 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 u, and if I take the derivative u prime, that becomes 3t squared plus 2t. Wow, voila, look at that. That is my u prime great so I have my u prime here so therefore I can just remove it when I take the integral and I get now the antiderivative of this factor so t cubed plus t squared it used to be the power of 1 now I have to raise it to the power of 2 and I divide by 2 plus c cool okay number seven what's my ugly thing blah 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 and then what's my u prime well usually we're looking for brackets in this case we don't have a bracket but we do have a denominator so i'm thinking could the ugly thing be 4x cubed minus 5 and if that's the case what would u prime be then yeah 12x squared do we see 12x squared anywhere oh i'm sorry we don't but we do see 6x squared so how can I get a 12? Well, I hope you can see that 6 times 2 will give me 12, right? 2 times 6, that's 12. But wait, wait, wait. I can't just go ahead and plug in a 2. I've changed the value of the expression. So to balance that out, right, I, had, I better put a 1 half in front. So knowing that now, this would help because this is now equivalent to 1 half the integral of 12 now in the numerator and that's perfect because that's what I'm looking for there's my factor that I can now remove so when I take the integral goodbye and then let's see well the square root in the denominator is the same thing as I guess I should say note uh, 1 over root 4x cubed minus 5 is the same thing as 4x cubed minus 5 to the power of negative 1 half. So now if I take 4x cubed minus 5 and I raise it, let's see, add 1 to the power. So negative 1 half plus 1 would be 1 half. Divide by the new exponent, which is 1 half, plus c. I hope that you see that the final answer will just be 4x cubed minus 5 to the power of 1 half plus c now notice all of these questions you can go back and double check by now taking the derivative of your answer and hopefully you'll get the integrand that you started with because if you do great and if you don't you made some sort of mistake okay number eight look at this one uh, if u was equal to y cubed plus one right 
then the derivative u prime would be 3y squared. Uh, I don't see a 3y squared. So you may be thinking, oh, I can do this. Yeah, I'll put the 3y squared here. And then I just divide by a 3y squared out front here. What's the problem with this? Unfortunately, this is not a constant, right? So when I take the integral, I don't get just that 1 over 3y squared as a constant. So in this case, this is bad news. There actually is no way for us to do this one using reverse chain rule. So unfortunately for you, or maybe fortunately, you get to practice doing some expansion. y to the 6, 2y cubed, plus 1. Yes, unfortunately this is what you must do, expand, and then now take the antiderivative of each of these individually. So be careful, you don't always use reverse chain rule. It only works right now because that number I pull out in front of the integral sign is a constant. Number 8, that would not have been the case. Mm, one half, I believe. Okay, so there's your answer for number eight. Okay, nine, we deal with trig functions, so sine of 4x. So once again, what's my ugly u or ugly blah blah blah? Yeah, you're thinking that's 4x, so therefore u prime is the factor of 4. This is great now because I can put a 4 in front here, I can put a 1 quarter out there. One quarter is not a problem because that is a constant. And so now that 4 disappears and the integral of sine is, you got it, negative cosine. So negative cosine 4x plus c. I'll write it just a little bit nicer. There you go. Um, 10 and 11, I think, are similar, so why don't you see if you can try that, okay? And then double check your answer with me. Okay, now, what's the ugly function? It's this part here, the theta squared. Notice this is the same thing as cosine bracket theta squared. So if you set that for number 10, u is theta squared, and then u prime is 2 theta, that's great. And you're thinking, but I have 3 theta. I know. I want to make that 2 theta. In order to make that 2 theta, I guess I should multiply 2 by 3 halves because 3 halves times 2 gives us 3. Okay, be aware of your notations. So don't forget your d theta at the end. Remember, the integral and the d theta go hand in hand. We can now... Whoa, what just happened there? We can now have that constant stay there. We can then do the integral, and then this, of course, is the u prime factor that just disappears. And the integration of cosine is just sine, so sine theta squared plus c. And once again, if you took the derivative of this, you would get back what you started with. Okay? Don't believe me? Double check yourself. Okay, 11. Hmm, sine squared. Well, that's the same thing as sine x all squared. So now if you're thinking, what's my u? If my ugly function is sine x, you are correct. If the derivative is cosine x, you are correct. And that's great, because look, I see cosine x right there in my expression. Good, I can just take it out then. So the integral of something squared is just something cubed. Divide by 3 plus c, and there you have it. If you don't like using the bracket form, then sine cubed x, one third. That is fine as well. If you got these two answers, give yourself a pat on the back. Okay. Yay. Now, I know some of you might be thinking this is kind of weird, like things just disappear, you like this is kind of mm, bizarre, mystical, I get it. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to actually come back to these questions and I'm going to do them another way for you. And if you like that way better than this, then by all means, use that way instead. Okay? 
But in the meantime, let's move on to our next page. And let me show you this idea of use substitution. Okay. Now, integration is difficult because when they get more complicated, it's not easy to do. Okay. Uh, simple rules for integration might fail. The simple rules that I'm talking about, that's the stuff you learned in lesson 6.1 and 6.2. Okay. Sometimes you have to make some type of substitution to be able to integrate. And so in this course, a common substitution will be to use this letter u be equal to either the radicand, which is the stuff underneath the square root, or just some denominator or something that's in a bracket. Okay, that part of the expression is used, and then we're going to change the variable throughout. So the idea, hopefully, is to make it simpler, so that it will look like one of the nice, easy ones we've done in lesson 6.1 and 6.2. Okay, this method is called U substitution. Okay, and you only use this if those simpler ones don't work. So don't think I should apply U substitution to everything. No, don't do that. Okay, it should be your last resort. So if you're thinking about how we do this, and I'll show you an example in a sec, but the procedure is this. You have to figure out what is equal to u. That's the most important part. And like I said, usually it's stuff underneath the square root, the radicand, or some inside function, like inside a bracket, or it could be a denominator. And then the idea is I want you to solve for x in terms of u. Okay? This step, tricky. Sometimes you do need it, sometimes you don't, okay? But the key then is to then differentiate, okay? Yes, you do need to differentiate, okay? And then once you've done that, hopefully you can find dx, because then the idea is I want you to substitute the expressions into the integral. And then magically, everything that has x will then change into u, okay? And then, hopefully, it'll be an easier one in terms of u, and then we can integrate, and then go back and substitute, okay? Now, like I said, sometimes it is easier to do steps three before step two, okay? These two here. This is step two. This is step three. I actually prefer to do step three first before step two, okay? So, what do I mean? Let me show you. Ooh, number seven looks nasty, okay? So once again, the idea is I want you to let u equal something that is not so nice. Under the square root, denominator, in a bracket. In this case, let u equals x minus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to do step 3 first. I'm going to ask you to take the derivative with respect to u. So the derivative of u, you can use this notation u prime. Okay. But I actually prefer now to use the notation du dx. Okay. Du dx. And the derivative of x minus 1, of course, is just 1. And you're like, so what? Why do I use this notation? Because now I want you to solve for dx. Now, du dx is a ratio, so I can actually solve it. Say du equals to, yeah, that's right, 1 times dx. Or du just equals dx. Okay. Now, the other step that we had to do, and we have, oops, we might use sometimes, is this. It says, Solve for x, okay? Now, let us assume that we didn't do this step right now, okay? Let's see what happens. Just watch for a second. Put down your pen, so, and just watch. If I didn't do that step, and I now substitute, because this is called use substitution. I'm going to leave some step space here, by the way. Now, substitute. Here's what you'll see. I'm going to take this integral. And the x stays there, but now the square root of x minus 1 becomes, that's right, u. And what does dx become? Well, we just said dx here equals to du. So we have this. And remember, the idea is substitute everything for where there's x and replace it with u. I've done that, except for this x. You see, this is why we need to go back into our initial step and then actually solve for x. Solve for x. Why do we need to do that? Because when I solve for x, 
I now can also make that replacement for this X here, okay? So now when I substitute, and please write this down, you will now have the X being replaced with U plus 1, and the root X minus 1 being replaced with root U, and that DX equals to DU. Do you see now how everything has been turned into U? And that's great, because this is actually easier to integrate. Why? Because I can actually distribute this and rewrite this as a power. U times root U, that's U to the 3 halves. 1 times root U is just U to the 1 half. And then this whole thing now can be integrated. Much easier, because now these are just powers. So let's go ahead now and finally do the integration. U to the, we'll add 1 to the exponent. We'll divide by the new exponent. And by the way, I'm going to start doing, instead of this, divide by 5 halves. Dividing by 5 halves is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to write this as 2 fifths. Just save me a line. Okay. Uh, U to the 1 half. Yeah, add 1. Divide by the new exponent. Multiply by the reciprocal. And then plus C. Yes, don't forget our famous plus C. Now, don't leave your answer like this, because our original question was in terms of x. So your last step now is to re-substitute. Re-substitute. Two-fifths. The u is once again x minus 1. Plus two-thirds. x minus 1 to the three-halves. Plus c. And this is your answer to this integration question. Woo! Woo! Your head must be spinning. Yes, I know. Lots of steps, but you need to practice. I told you this was the hardest lesson so far. Why would you doubt me? Okay, um, one more example here. And then we really should take a break. Same idea, okay? U substitution. So we have to let U equal to something. If you start, let U equal to 2X plus 3, I like it. Okay? If you then thought to yourself, we need to find DU DX, I like it. And that's 2. And look, I like to solve for DX. So I'm going to move the DX to the other side. DU equals to 2 DX. And then I want to isolate DX, so I'm going to put this as DU over 2. Okay. Now remember how I said earlier too, you might want to actually solve for x, that might help out, so I'm just going to quickly do that now. You don't always have to do that, but I will. So u minus 3 equals to 2x, or x equals to u minus 3 over 2. And now I'm going to make my substitutions. So now, substitute. Here we go. We got 2. Our x now becomes, yeah, u minus 3 over 2 minus 1. All over 2x plus 3. Well, that's my u to the power of 9. And then my dx now becomes, that's right, du over 2. Now you may be thinking, this looks even worse than before. Hold on, let's simplify and you'll see why. Those twos divide out. You get u minus 3 minus 1 in the numerator over u to the power of 9. That du over 2 is the same thing having a factor of 1 half, which I'll now take out in front, and that du. So once again, this 1 half is there. We will simplify just a little more. u minus 3 minus 1, that's u minus 4 over u to the power of 9 du. And then this is helpful because now I can just separate this. I can have the 1 half still in front. u over u to the 9 minus 4 over u to the 9 du. I can simplify that to just u to the negative 8. 
and here I have minus 4 u to the negative 9 du and now finally let's do some antiderivatives let's use red u to the negative 7 1 7 with a negative sign I better put a big bracket right here minus 4 that's u to the negative 8 with a negative 1 over 8 in front and then plus c hmm, if I distribute the 1 half in as well that becomes negative 1 over 14 u to the negative 7 uh, 1 half times 4 is 2 2 times 1 eighth that's 1 quarter this is positive 1 quarter u to the negative 8 plus c and then finally resubstitute wow resubstitute ah, I'm getting so tired 2x plus 3 was my u 2x plus 3 once again was my u plus c wow Whew. okay if you're tired and your brain hurts, you're not alone. But remember how I told you earlier that we could do those other questions, the ones on the previous page, a different way? I'm going to devote the rest of this video to do that, okay? Now, if you don't want to learn it, that's fine. Don't watch it. But it really is just using this idea of use substitution all again. So I'm going to actually say watch it because I think it's actually important. Um, but maybe you want to take a break first and, you know, grab something to eat, grab a drink of water, then come back, refresh your mind before watching the rest of it. Okay? So the rest of the video will be me doing questions 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, again, using this idea of U substitution. And maybe the idea of U substitution would be more methodical, but it is a little bit longer, but it might make more sense than me just saying, take it out and make it go away. All right? So take a break, and then we'll come back. All right, so remember that five was this, and yeah, maybe you want to write this down on a separate piece of paper and then stick it back into your notes. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to use now u substitution to do this, okay? So remember, u substitution is let stuff in a bracket equal to u, so we'll do that, 3x minus 1, okay? And then in this case, what's the next thing we do? Yeah, we take the derivative, du dx, and that just equals to 3. And then the idea was to solve for dx. So du equals to 3 dx. So dx equals to du over 3. Now let's substitute. So here we go. The integration of not 3x minus 1 anymore, it's u to the power of 10. And then in this case, it's not dx anymore, it's du over 3. And that over 3, I can then pull out the front as a factor of 1 third. And now I'm just asking you to do u to the power of 10 du. What is the integral of u to the power of 10? Yeah, that's u to the power of 11. So we'll keep the one third there. u to the power of 11 over 11 plus c. And then we have to combine it together. And once again, we replace the u with what we started with. You bet. And if you double check your answer with what you started with, guess what? Same thing. Okay, but maybe this is a little more methodical. I think it's a few more steps, but you know, if you like step, 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 step stuff, then this might make better sense. Okay, let me show you number six now. Number six. Let me quickly write out the question for you. The integral of 3t squared plus 2t. t cubed plus t squared dt. Once again, what do we let equal to u? Some ugly function. You're like, both these are ugly. I know. Take the higher power one. Because our next step is to find du d. Now, don't forget, this is not dx this time, right? The variable here is t, so it's du dt. The derivative of du dt, or the derivative du dt, is equal to 3t squared plus 2t. And then remember, I want to solve for dt, so 
du equals to 3t squared plus 2t times dt. And I want to solve for dt, so I better take that 3t squared plus 2t and put it on the left side. Now you're like, okay, I guess it's time to, that's right, substitute. And you might be thinking, hmm, in this case, I have my 3t squared plus 2t, yeah. And then now I have my, oh, t cubed plus t squared, that's you, right. So that becomes you. And then dt, I replace with du over 3t squared plus 2t. Now look at that. A 3t squared plus 2t in the denominator. Oh, look at that. A 3t squared plus 2t there. Goodbye, goodbye. Or divide them out. And so really now you're left with the integral of u du. Well, what's the integral of u? Yeah, that's right. u squared over 2 plus c. And then we'll resubstitute the u. Look at that. The same answer as what we had before. Okay. All right. Uh, let me show you number seven too, and then I think I'm going to skip eight because number eight we actually didn't use the reverse chain rule, and then I'll do nine, ten, and eleven. Okay. And then you can decide, or you can tell me at the end of the video which one do you prefer: use substitution for all the questions, or you like reverse chain rule and then use substitution for the trickier ones. Okay. Number seven. Ooh, 6x squared all over the square root of 4x cubed minus 5dx. Okay, once again, what is u? Mm -hmm. The stuff under the square root sign, the radicand. We will then once again take the derivative, du dx, that's 12x squared. We will solve for dx. So dx equals to du over 12x squared. Now after doing that, now it's time to, that's right, substitute. We'll leave the 6x squared for now. That root now becomes root u, and dx now becomes du over 12x squared. And lo and behold, I can simplify this to, you betcha, a one half. And now once again, everything's in terms of u. Nice, eh? I can then rewrite this as u to the negative one half du. And now I can integrate the integral hmm, of u to the negative one half. That's the power. So I'm going to increase it by one, divide by the new exponent. That just gives me u to the power of one half plus c. And then finally, don't forget, yeah, resubstitute. Beautiful. Okay, once again, a few more steps, but a lot more logical, methodical than saying, hey, just make it disappear. All right, let me finish this off. Number nine, it's the integral of sine 4x dx. Okay, once again, let u equal to, yeah, the ugly thing in this case is just 4x du dx. Mm hmm. Is the number four. Want to solve for dx? Okay, I don't know if you're getting bored of me doing it all again, but yes, that's how you solve for dx. Make the substitutions. Sine of no longer 4x but u, no longer dx but du over 4. That over 4, I can plug or take out to the front to make it a quarter. And then what's the integral of sine u? Yeah, negative cosine of u. 
And then once again, let me re-substitute. And there you have it. Tada. Okay. Um, I'll do 10 and I'll do 11. And then like I said, we'll be done. Like I said, please, please, please. This is the hardest part so far of the chapter. You need to spend some time really understanding it, picking a method that works for you and making it work because like I said, calculus is cumulative. You know, use this again later on. Okay. Let's do number 10 and then number 11. Or actually, I want you to try it. I've talked a lot and my voice is getting hoarse. So I am going to stop talking, but I'll still do the questions for you. I just want you to actually do it yourself first and then double check. Okay. It's always easy when you watch and listen to me do it, but in order for you to learn, you must try it yourself. All right. Good luck. Pause the video. Remember our, our variable is theta in this case. We'll solve for d theta. We'll make the substitutions now. So three theta cosine of u and then du is du over two theta. Good. And that three theta over two theta that simplifies to you got it, three halves. Then you're just doing the integral of cosine u du. That's nice, because that's just sine of u plus c. Three over two sine of u, which is theta squared plus c. The 11, if you let u equals to sine x, that would be great. Remember, sine squared x is the same thing as sine x all squared. The derivative in this case now is cosine x. Same idea, we want to solve for dx. And now you're ready to substitute. Oops, I forgot to actually put the integral sign here. <gasps> Terrible. The integral of u squared cosine x, but dx is du over cosine x. Perfect. Goodbye. We're left with just the integral of u squared du. And that's just u cubed over 3 plus c. And then I'll replace u with sine x. There you go. Can you give yourself a pat on the back?